I survived 100 days in Minecraft Pixelmon. I have three goals. Number one is to catch a legendary Pokemon. Number two, beat all five gems. Last but not least, become the best Pokemon trainer on this server. And the first thing I did when I logged on was choosing my starter. And you know I had to pick the fire type. Welcome to the team, Charmander. Everything was looking great. It was until he showed up. Whoa, what? Who is this guy? Rival man? Haha, <laughs> what's up, chump? Hope you like my level 50 blast toys. No, you gotta be kidding me. I had found my rival and been defeated. It was then I knew I needed to train harder than anyone else to become the best Pokemon trainer. On day three, I realized that I needed a base and began looking for a spot to build. And on day four, I found the perfect spot to start building. And while I'm working on this house, did you know that you can play on play.pokesaga.org right now? If you use the tutorial in the description, you can download the Pixelmon Plus pack for the best experience possible and join me on the Poke Galaxy realm, where you can type slash warp Preston to build next to my new fire base. Ah, there we go! A beautiful log cabin with its very own fire logo. But just then, I heard a familiar sound. Oh, let's go! A Diglett. That is literally my favorite Pokemon. I caught myself a Diglett, the second member of my team. After this big one, I was ready to start training. But before that, I knew I needed to gear up, so I spent the rest of the day mining for a full set of iron armor. And finally, on day six, I set off to potentially beat my first Pokemon trainer. Y'all know I'm gonna start with Diglett. I gotta see what this guy can do. I'm not a noob after all. This Diglett knew Mud Slap, and it was super effective against this guy's shield arm. Although it was close, Diglett cleaned up all on his own, and I won my first battle to finish off the day. Let's go! We did it, Diglett! I returned home that night to heal my team at the Poke Center machine and prepared for day seven. A day I was not prepared for. This was a big day, because it's time to challenge my first gym. But as I started traveling, I noticed as I passed the jungle that I began to hear a really strange noise. And I began following it for a while. I turned a corner and... No way I just tracked down a Mew. What? We're already gonna have a legendary? <sighs> but there's a problem. I only had regular Pokeballs, and this is Mew we're talking about. Catching a legendary this early would be massive in my goal of becoming the best trainer on the server. In reality, I only had regular Pokeballs and I failed every single throw. I mean, hey, it was worth a shot, right? If I wanted to catch a legendary, I was going to need stronger balls. But I had to move on. I had a gym to challenge. And after searching long and hard, I found it on day nine, the ground gym. With no hesitation, I challenged the gym leader, confident as ever. If this guy was half as easy as the last trainer, he wouldn't be much of a problem. Wait, Earthquake? He knows that move already? His Garchomp literally one-shot my Charmander with Earthquake and then did the same to my Diglett. Wow, my Pokemon were not ready for this gym. We've got some serious work to do. I was completely obliterated and I knew I was going to need to level up and become a lot stronger if I ever wanted to beat my rival. The next day I spent up building the fire base because I needed an apricorn farm so that I could craft the best Pokeballs on the server and that's what I focused on. It needs to be big, so I made sure to clear out a very large section. By the next morning, I was finally complete with the entire framing of my apricorn greenhouse. Okay, this took way longer than I thought it would. <laughs> now it's time to actually start on the farm. Let me grab all of my apricorns. I planted my apricorns, added a water source, and hoed all the dirt. And now it's time to grow my apricorns. By night, it was time to head to the jungle to level up my Charmander. Because my goal was to get him to the highest level possible, I challenged every trainer I saw. And after the third fight, a big moment happened. Whoa, our little Charmander's evolving, Charmeleon! Let's go! Before I came back to the house, I felt lucky and decided we had one more fight left in us. I used Charmeleon's new ability, Fire Fang, to destroy the stranger. And that's when I discovered something crazy. Wait, did she drop something? What is this? An Everstone? Let's go! I can put this on Diglett. Yes! Now he can't evolve, which means he's gonna be Diglett forever. On day 15, with my Pokemon looking stronger than ever, I knew it was time to return to the gym, but not before securing one last thing. Okay, we lost to a ground Pokemon last fight, so we need to catch that water type. I searched forever, but just couldn't find any good water Pokemon. But that's when I stumbled into a group of Magikarp. <laughs> really? Magikarp. Thanks, game. What are they doing? Why are they flopping out like that? I thought it was strange that all the Magikarp were gathered around, but then I noticed a player in the distance. Oh no, is it him? Oh, 
I thought it was my rival for a second. <laughs> He's just bullying all the magic carp. What a jerk. You know what, guys? You shouldn't sleep on a magic carp. Trust me. I'm going to show you how powerful they actually can be. With that said, I chose my future powerhouse and began my epic training montage. Although, it took a little longer than expected. I wasn't sure how effective it would be just splashing around, but at the end of day 18, at level 20, it finally evolved. What did I say? It's evolving! We've got ourselves a Gyarados! Now the ground gym stands no chance. On day 19, I made sure the rest of the Pokemon on my team got some attention and caught them up to speed. Alright, it's time. On day 20, I made my way back to the ground gym, but after arriving, I started to get worried. I got destroyed last time. What if I didn't train enough? No, I believe in this Pokemon team. I sent in my Gyarados first. I was hoping the water type would really help us. And to my surprise, Aqua Tail and Waterfall made quick work of the ground gym leader's Pokemon. Oh, this is easy. Literally one shot. We freaking did it, ladies and gentlemen. We beat our first gym. It felt so good to overcome my first big challenge, but I didn't even have time to celebrate. I had so much more to do, and I knew my team still needed to be much stronger. For the next five days, I started training again. I set out into the wilderness to battle the strongest Pokemon Pokemon I could find, keeping my eyes out for any rare Pokemon I could catch if I got the chance. On day 25, I found a super strong trainer and decided to battle him. And what happens next, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> oh my god, he dropped a Master Ball? I, I couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, with this, I can finally catch a legendary Pokemon. So on day 26, I was off. It was time to hunt for a legendary. I searched biome after biome until I saw something out of the corner of my eye. Something on fire. Oh, yo, a Moltres! I had found a Moltres, a legendary fire Pokemon. I started to chase him down as he flew away to capture him once and for all. But then something devastating happened. Wait, no, who is that? Stop. Stop, no. You actually thought you could catch this Moltres? You aren't worthy of a legendary Pokemon, you chump. Ha <laughs> ha see you later. My rival had stolen my legendary and along with it, he stole my hope. I don't have much to say. I'm just, I'm, I'm devastated. I was sad, but I still needed to do something. I headed to the mines and spent four days down there, contemplating my journey so far and trying to get over the loss I just experienced. And just when I thought I lost all hope, I found something amazing while mining. Wait, is this what I think it is? No way, a fossil? I had stumbled across an awesome find, a fossil Pokemon. This reignited the hope inside of me and reminded me of why I was on this journey, to catch and battle Pokemon. I raced back up to my base and began gathering all the things I would need to bring this fossil to life. After polishing it off, my new Pokemon was revealed. Please be Kabuto, please be Kabuto. Please, please, please. Kabuto, yes! This is such a cool Pokemon because he's water and rock. From day 30 to 32, I spent my time adding some improvements to my base. Mainly a giant wall to protect me and my Pokemon from my evil rival. And day 32 through 34, I got to work. My Kabuto is only level 1, so I needed to get some serious leveling done. I traveled all over defeating every Pokemon in sight. At this point, my team was starting to feel seriously strong. And at the end of it all, I had two evolutions. Charmeleon is becoming Charizard. Finally, Kabutops. After all this training, it was time for the second gym. Luckily for me, I have a secret ace up my sleeve, Kabutops, because he destroys bug Pokemon. At this point, all of my Pokemon were around level 50, and the gym is at 35 through 40. The training paid off. Kabutops then wiped the entire gym using only one move. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Two gyms down, three to go, time to head back and celebrate. After such a huge victory, I felt like I had to go home and party. I barely started anything before I heard this strange noise outside my house. I went outside and noticed the sound was coming from the sky, which could mean only one thing. You gotta be kidding me. It's a Rayquaza. I spotted another legendary Pokemon. I hopped on my Charizard and flew as fast as I could because I wasn't letting this one get stolen. I threw my Master Ball as I said a prayer, and this happened. Yes! We did it! We caught him! We finally caught a legendary! I was so excited, I couldn't wait to test him out. He just one-shot this Geo dude without it being super effective. For the next 10 days, I spent all of my time upgrading my base. I added even bigger walls and spent a few days clearing out a really nice courtyard area for the fire base. After this, I placed some paths down to make everything feel connected and voila! It's beautiful. Other than that, not much else happened on these days. I just made the fire base look awesome. On day 61, I was out exploring the snowy tundra when I heard another strange noise. It's my rival and he's about to catch a Dialga? No, come on, man. Not another one. Where is he getting these Master Balls? After he caught him, I got a bit scared and thought it would be a good time to get out of there. 
I managed to sneak away, but on day 63, I ran into a giant group of trainers and decided that I could stop here to train Rayquaza a bit more. The problem was, these trainers were way more dangerous than I first thought. Gyarados, really? But I was wrong. Charizard destroyed the rest of their Pokemon. I'll never doubt my team again. Until I do. <laughs> After beating all the trainers, I got a Mega Bracelet that'll let my Pokemon Mega Evolve. After this, I was eager to bust into my next gym. With my newfound knowledge of Mega Evolutions, I knew this was the perfect opportunity to test our strength. So on day 67, I went to the fighting gym to test my Rayquaza's Mega Evolution. All right, gym leader, let's see what you're made of. But before I show you this battle, I want you to comment down below how many Pokemon you think my Mega Rayquaza has defeated. Because it wasn't one, two, or even three. He literally swept their entire team like he was taking out the trash. The power and girth behind this Rayquaza was finally undeniable. He couldn't be stopped. After some more training for a few days, on day 72, I decided the Steel Gym was my next victim. Except it turned out, uh, not what I expected. Yeah, apparently the Steel Gym has water types, which obliterated my Charizard. Oh, and some random elephant Pokemon that somehow defeated both my Rayquaza and Gyarados? So I lost all hope in being able to win, but then... Diglett reminded me what hope was. Come on, Earthquake, let's go! This is why Diglett is the best Pokemon. Don't at me. Unfortunately, he was stopped dead in his tracks. Come on. No, Diglett! This left me to rely on an old friend, Kabutops. Cause he's an, you know, cause he's a fossil. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's right. My level 46 Kabutops against a level 60 Pokemon. That was basically his upgrade. All right, save us Kabutops. Only 12% of damage, what? That's when the unthinkable happened. Scizor literally used three non-attack moves in a row. He's literally just bulking. I think we can win. Come on, Kabutops. Final hit. Yes! In my proud moment of victory, I realized it was time to celebrate. And what a better way to celebrate than to build a statue of one of the greatest Pokemon to have ever lived? That's right, Diglett. So for the next five days, I got some new materials and built a statue dedicated to Diglett to my victory over the fourth gym. Would you just look at it? Is this not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? But we still had one gym left. Day 77, I flew my way over to my fifth and final gym to what turned out to be one of the most epic gym fights I've ever experienced, the Dragon Gym. This is one of the hardest gyms you can fight, but it's also a true test for Rayquaza to prove he is the best dragon type Pokemon out there. Right away, I used Mega Rayquaza to wipe three of his Pokemon with ease, but then an unexpected barrier, Flygon. All right, Flygon, you're next. Wait, that actually did decent damage. Within two turns, Flygon decimated Rayquaza, forcing me to send out Charizard. Luckily, Charizard made quick work of that Flygon, but then came Mega Garchomp. Not only is he mega strong, but he's also my brother Caleb's favorite Pokemon, so I knew I had to take him down. Unfortunately, he left my Charizard incredibly low, leaving me with a single option dependent on luck, Dragon's Breath. You see, this ability has a very small chance that I'll be able to paralyze Mega Garchomp, giving me enough time to hopefully take him out. Okay, Dragon Breath, super effective. Does it paralyze? Yes, it does! Don't move, don't... Yes, he was actually stunned! Now, with the miracles of God and anime on my side, I sent in Diglett to finish the job with his strongest move. Now, Diglett, hit him with the Earthquake! Yes! In the end, Rayquaza knocked out three dragon Pokemon in a row without even flinching. So I guess he really was the strongest dragon type, or was he? I knew there were other dragon type Pokemon out there to catch, and with my last slot free, I knew what I had to do. For over five days, I traveled from land and sea to find myself one of the best dragon Pokemon and personal favorite, Dragonite. It took at least three Ultra Balls just to capture him, but he turned out to be pretty high level, so I made sure to train him a bit more before our next battle. I spent the next eight days training all of my Pokemon to their absolute limit. After all the training, taking on gym after gym, and building up my team through multiple challenges, I had completed all of my goals except one, to become the best trainer on the server. And to do that, I had to defeat my rival. Finally, I found him on day 100. Rival, I've come for my final challenge. Ha! You really think you've become powerful enough? Yeah, my Pokemon are better than yours, nerd. Yeah, right. Have you seen my legendaries, especially Moltres? Enough talk, it's time to see who the real Pokemon master is. And so the final fight began. Initially his Blastoise confused my Dragonite, so I struggled to land a hit, but eventually I recovered. My Mega Rayquaza was a strong match for Snorlax and completely destroyed Moltres. Unfortunately, this happened right after. Oh, 
but not Rayquaza. While my mighty Rayquaza was down, Gyarados stepped in to help chip away this Dialga, but he couldn't be stopped. I was down to my final Pokemon. It was so intense, a final battle between his strongest Pokemon and my Charizard, and in the last moments, the final blow was dealt. Charizard, let's go! The final damage was dealt by the Pokemon that started it all. Charizard had won the battle. No way, that's that little runt Charmander. Let's freaking go, take that, buddy. The battle was long and well fought, but we came out on top. With my rival defeated, I was finally the best Pokemon trainer on the server. Nothing and nobody could possibly stop me. Wait, who's that? Is that the guy from earlier? You know, the one that was bullying the Magikarp with his Jolteon? And what I didn't realize was that there was a secret final boss on the server. You are weak and your Pokemon are weak. You will never be the best. Oh, really? I'm willing to bet and prove this right here, right now. I beat this guy so I can easily beat you. I'm the top trainer of the server. Think again. We had an explosive battle, but starting with Mega Rayquaza, I was able to slowly take down his team of legendaries and even his own Charizard. Every single one of my team needed to put in their A game to take this guy down. He was fully stacked, and although it was close, I finally defeated him. I'm the server's Pokemon master. Day 100 was at an end. We did everything we set out to accomplish. We survived 100 days on the server, caught a legendary Pokemon, beat every single gym, and became the best Pokemon trainer on the server. And with that, our Pokemon journey was finally complete.